guess that real estate has its own jargon and coming into it as a newbie, you might stumble across some words that you're not familiar with. Trust me, knowing the real estate lingo ahead of time will make you much more confident and comfortable as you enter your upcoming real estate transaction, whether that's a home sale or a home purchase. Let's start with a buyer's agent. A buyer's agent is a buyer's representation in the home purchase. The buyer's agent will guide you and assist you in the process of purchasing your home and has a fiduciary duty, which means the agent will work solely in your best interest and you will benefit from the vast experience that the buyer's agent brings to the table. What the agent knows, you knows, and that is a really good feeling. What is the down payment? Most loan programs require you to bring some money to the table. Now, it's a myth that you have to have 20%, but the various loan programs require you to have at least zero up to three and a half percent. And also remember that the less money you bring to the table, the higher your mortgage payment is going to be. Inclusions and exclusions, basically what stays and what goes once you close on the house. In the contract to buy and sell, you will find a section where it's listed in details what is expected to stay with the house or what the seller will take once they move out. It is important to be as detailed as possible because sometimes it's not quite clear what should stay or what should go. As a rule of thumb, I picture taking a house and turning it upside down and whatever falls out goes with the seller and whatever stays in of course stays with the house. Now there are some differences and that's why it's also important to really note everything in the contract, but as a rule of thumb, that works. What is a deed? A deed is a physical document proving the ownership you will receive at time of closing. There are various types of deeds, but the best and probably the most common deed is a general warranty deed in which the home seller guarantees full ownership of the property basically as far back as the beginning of time, uh, let's say to the first, very first owner. Sales concessions are also called seller's contribution to buyer's closing cost. This is when a seller agrees to assist the buyer in purchasing the home by providing a certain amount of money, which the buyer can then use to pay for closing costs, pay down debt, buy down the interest rate, and so on. Needs to be said, there are lender limits that will cap that amount, so it's important to talk to your lender about how much to ask for. Let's talk appraisal. An appraisal is a third party providing the value assessment of the home you're looking to buy. The lender will require an appraisal and will use that as a benchmark for the amount they are going to lend and their lending requirements. For the lender, your home is an investment and they want to make sure that the property is not overvalued. If you pay cash, you don't need an appraisal. Several times during the process of a home purchase, buyers can express their disapproval about certain conditions in or about a home. For example, during a home inspection where issues were discovered that now the buyer wants to have fixed or the appraisal value came into low. In short, if there's an issue, you as a buyer can request to have it addressed. That's the objection. The resolution describes if and how the objection is going to be handled by the seller. A contingency in a home purchase means that some condition has to be fulfilled no later than a specific time before the buyer will move forward with the transaction. That could be as simple as a home inspection has to be performed or it could be a little bit more involved when a buyer has to sell their home before they can proceed with purchasing another home. Let's talk about home inspections. First of all, you should never buy a house without a home inspection. You need to know what is wrong with the house and then you have the right to ask the seller to fix whatever isn't right. Now, depending on the market situation, they might not be willing to do that, but then that's up to you to decide if you wanna move forward. Home inspections, we generally recommend a overall home inspection, a radon test, as well as a sewer scope because those cover pretty much everything that 
could go wrong in a house. And once you review the reports, then you can decide if you want to have some other inspectors come in, like somebody to take a look at a roof. There are many acronyms in real estate, and one of them is PITI, and it stands for Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance. It's pretty simple. Principal is the amount that you're going to borrow. Interest is the amount you're going to have to pay when you borrow a certain amount until you repay it. Property taxes have to be paid on a yearly basis. Usually they're collected by the lender and then paid by the lender to the county. And last but not least, home insurance. Home insurance is also collected by the lender. It is required without a home insurance. You cannot get a loan and it will be paid by the lender directly to the insurance provider. So that's it. You're now on your way to becoming an expert in real estate terminology. All kidding aside though, you're ready for the next step. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to learn more about the home buying process from start to finish, visit our website. But I actually conveniently dropped the home buyer's guide link below where you can download it for free and see what your next move should be to get you into your dream Colorado home.